Hey brewers, it's Paul here and today we are brewing a no boil New England IPA. That's right, no boiling in this brew. Why the fuck would I want to do this? Two reasons. Number one, shorter brew day. And number two, I'm curious. Is the beer going to turn out? Is it going to be full of DMS? Who knows? So for grain bill today, we're doing six pounds. This is for a five and a half gallon batch, 21 liters. Uh, six pounds of Golden Promise, five pounds of domestic two row, pound and a half of oat flakes, pound of wheat, half a pound of Golden Naked Oats. I haven't brewed with those yet, so I've heard good things. I've seen a lot of breweries use them in uh, their New England IPAs, so figured let's give it a try. We're gonna mash at uh, around 152 Fahrenheit uh, for an hour. We're gonna do our sparge as normal, and then instead of bringing it to a boil, we're gonna bring it to about 170 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna let it sit there for 20 minutes to sterilize the wort. Then I'm gonna add my hops and let it steep for another 50 minutes to get a little bit of bitterness and like all that flavor and aroma from those things. Uh, then we're gonna chill and transfer the fermenter and that's pretty much it. For the water profile, for those of you interested, I was targeting uh, around 136 parts per million of chloride, 68 of sulfate, 95 of calcium, that's really all I pay attention to with a mash pH of around 5.59. On my hazies, I like to keep the mash pH a little bit higher. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna get it uh, doughed in here. I'm curious, I have a pound of wheat malt and a pound and a half of oats, and I didn't bother to put any rice hulls. So far with the Brusilla Gen 4, I haven't really had any stuck mashes, so fingers crossed this works out. Oh, and one other thing with these uh, no-boil brews is adjust your mash and sparge volumes. Uh, since you're not boiling, you're not going to need to use as much water. I believe I'm using uh, 23 liters, so 6 US gallons for the mash, and then around 1.7 gallons US or 6.4 liters for sparging. Smells good already. And as you can see, I prefer a thinner mash. I like using more mash water and less sparge. I find it's easier to make sure there's no dough balls in there. Oh, like that one right there. Get out of here. One final check, I think we're good. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna put the lid on. We're gonna let this mash for one hour and then we'll come back and do the sparch. All right, so it's been mashing for an hour. We're gonna get ready to sparge. Turn off our pump. I didn't bother doing a mash out this time. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't really see a difference in the finished beer. Put it up on the first set of feet, let it drain for a little bit, and then I'll put it all the way up. Find it's a little bit easier, especially this was a bigger grain bill. I think it was around 14 pounds plus all the water, so it's a little heavy. It's easier to do it this way. And as far as I can tell, I use no rice hulls, and there's no issue with a stuck sparge or anything like that. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so sparge with about 6.4 liters, again, using less total water because we're not boiling this at all. Uh, I'm going to set my target to 172. Now, the reason I want to do that is in pretty much all malted grains, there is something called SMM. And once you exceed 180 Fahrenheit, that turns into DMS. Now, we don't want to get that in our beer. So I figure at 172, it's hot enough to pasteurize the wort. What I'm gonna do is 20 minutes, just the wort, and then 20 minutes with my uh, hops doing like a whirlpool. 
and uh, I think that that would be more than enough time to pasteurize everything. Then we'll chill it and uh, put it into the fermenter. So I'll just go ahead and add in my sporge water. I don't do anything fancy, I just pour it over the top. And uh, it's been working good for me throughout the years. If you have a better method on your Brazil or grandfather, you know, feel free to put it down in the comments. I'd like to uh, hear your ideas. And you don't have to do this, but I heat my sparge water up to about 170 Fahrenheit. You could do it with room temperature if you want. If you don't have an easy way to uh, heat up your sparge water, there's nothing wrong with that. It'll just take you longer to get to a boil. And you might lose like one or two points of efficiency. Okay, then just a little bit more. That looks like about 0.4 liters. Excellent, everything's looking like it's flowing really good. I'm also gonna put my chiller in. Might as well let that sit in there during the entire time as well. That'll kill off any bacteria or whatever that might be on there. Make sure my sparge heater is turned off. This is on. All right, once we get to uh, our desired temperature and this is done, uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so the sparge has finished and I realized I used too much water. I was looking at the wrong sheet when I was getting this ready. So I'm about two liters high. Uh, so when I said I mashed with 23 liters and then sparge with 6.4, I should have sparged with 4.4. So what I'm gonna do is check the gravity if it's close, I'm just going to leave it. If it's off by, let's say, five points or more, I'm just going to stir in a pound of DME. Usually I'd let this cool off a bit more, but it's close enough. I just want to get an idea of where we're at. My target gravity was about 1060. And we are at about 1055. Ah, it's close, but whatever. We're in a homebrew shop. I have a pound of DME right here, so I'll just stir that in, to be honest. All right. I'm going to try to get rid of most of the clumps. I'm not too worried about it, though. I went with Pilsen DME just to keep the color lighter and truer to the style that I was brewing. You could have used light DME and it would have been fine. Or even in a pinch dextrose, but I don't like that as much. It dries out the beer a little bit. Okay, we're getting close to the temperature I wanted to rest at, which was 170 Fahrenheit. So I'm going to put in our wort chiller. You always got to be careful for that. You saw a little bit of water fly out of there. Usually I hook up the tubes first. So we got our chiller in there. I'm going to start the pump just to make sure the temperature is uniform and also to steri sterilize the recirculation arm. So we're almost at, uh, <laughs> open the ball valve works a little better, hey? Uh, we're almost at 170. I'm going to wait for it to get to 170. I'm going to wait 20 minutes and then I'm gonna add my hops and let them steep for 20 minutes. So we're gonna cut and come back to uh, when we do that. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. We're gonna add in the Whirlpool hops. So two ounce of Cryo Mosaic. Let's see if I can actually cut these open, that will help. Two ounces of Cryo Simcoe. And one ounce of Cryo Citra. Then we're gonna let that steep for another 20 minutes. Uh, also, I want to check the gravity after adding that DME. Yes, this is the one I wanna use. 
We have two refractometers. One has SG and bricks, and the other one only has bricks, and I don't feel like Googling bricks to SG conversion jar. So we were around two liters of water, or of wort, too much, and we were off the original gravity by about uh, five points. So I added a pound of DME, and that puts us at about 1063. I'm happy with that. So that's a lot of hops. Mm. All right, we'll let that sit for 20 minutes and then we'll uh, chill and transfer to the fermenter. All right, so the hops have been steeping for 20 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the heating element. I have the pump recirculating and put in our chilling water. Make sure that the hose is not gonna spray out of the sink here. No, we're good. Got the pump going, yep. Usually I'd have a stir paddle or something, but I forgot to put it in there and I don't have a clean one. So hopefully the pump and this 50 foot chiller will get it down to pitching temps pretty quick, but uh, we'll just wait and see. All right, so we're chilled down to right around that 68 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split the wort into two fermenters. In one, I'm going to pitch Verdant IPA, which is what I typically do nowadays for my New England style IPAs. And the other one, I'm gonna do the Lutra Caveic or Quaic or however you say it, just to see the differences, how much faster it'll ferment. You know, I mean, why not? So the plan is to let them ferment for about 10 days. I'm gonna dry hop them on day two or three, keg them up, and then we'll be back for the tasting. Two weeks later. All right, so I let the beer ferment for, I think it was 10 days. The Lutra was finished way quicker, but I just wanted to leave them as similar as possible. So fermented 10 days, I put the dry hops in on day number three. So there was still pretty good active fermentation. Then I kegged them. They've been in the keg for about a week. So what's and, the other yeast? Uh, Lutra Kveik and Verdant. Let's uh, give her a rip. So I guess I'll have to watch the video to see what the rest of this is going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like I may have not actually done that yet. <laughs> and of course, using the Nuka Tap Mini. Really love this thing. Have you Way better. in the flow control? Because yesterday I was shooting some vids and I forgot that flow control <laughs> exists and just let it rip. Well, like, I did dial it down, but I also over carbonated these mirrors, so. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be. Uh, I know we we're gonna calibrate you our. You think uh, we'd be better at this? Uh, calibrate our things around here, cause like. Well, I'm no, you're. You problems. say yeah, I'll do it at 30 psi for two days, and then four days later you're like, oh shit. <laughs> Solid. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah, it's happened many a time. So I'll, I'll call the guys on Saturday and get them to turn it down, and then I come in on Tuesday and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. No boil, see if we get any DMS or anything else. In theory, we shouldn't, but. What is DMS? It's a long word <laughs> that means butter tasting. <laughs> butter, yeah, exactly, <laughs> popcorn butter. Yeah. So, this is the Lutra, this is the Verdant. Okay, what are we starting with? Let's do uh, Lutra. All right. Nose is pretty nice. I fermented this pretty hot, like 32, 33 Celsius. I get a little bit of that quake or kvaik or however you yeah. want to say it. I was wondering that. I'm like, well, we'll have to just wait and see for the next one. Not too shabby, I must say. Getting a little something, but I always get that from certain kvaik strains. Yeah, it's a like, little like a little I touch of I have yet to farmhouse. experience this ultra clean Kvaic fermentation that people talk about. Well, it's good. It's hoppy. Like this tastes like a New England IPA. It does. The the bitterness is there, but it's pretty smooth. It's a nice head. Yeah. Also, probably because of the overcarbonation, but <laughs> there is. A, so it's thick. There's a pound and a half of oat flakes and a pound of wheat malt in here, so you should be getting a pretty good head like that. Definitely not getting any butter though, but I feel like I do taste that Lutra. Yeah, it's got that little je ne sais quoi. That's like a little farmhouse here, Belgian to me. Right. But if you want to make a beer that ferments in like two, three days, it'll get oh, it'll get the job done. Yeah, like something about fast, fast, no boil. A couple of days, turn yeah. around, be like, oh shit, we got a party on Friday. It's Monday. Let's give her. Yeah. Right? See, the nose on this one, it doesn't have, or to me anyway, doesn't have any 
of that kind of little bit of funkiness. Mm -hmm. Kind of seems more weak overall. I like this one a little bit more. Doesn't have as much of that, or really any of that funk. Finish is a little bit more bitter, I think. Maybe a bit more dry. Did you check yeah. final gravity? Uh, yeah, they both, no, sorry. Verdant was 1.008, Kaveic was 1.006. Really? Yeah. So that's my brain, not reality. Yeah. yeah. Unless I f***ed that up. I didn't write it down uh, way, <laughs> when I, mean, I looked. Point so zero zero two. if I can actually, don't, if yeah. I can actually pick that out. It's one of those things like, oh, I'll remember which one was which. Of course, I never do. And I never write it down. But there's we sell logbooks that I don't use, but I tell all my customers this shit. <laughs> it's all in beer, Smith, you know. Mm. But there, there's something here, though. Can't quite put my finger on it. You also have to think there is a shit ton of hops in here. There was five ounce of cryo flame out and then um, three ounce in the dry hop. Because I've done one of these before, and I found that like day 16 or something in the keg, the, the, the beer just didn't have that same kind of little bit of bitter finish to it. And there's a little bit, of, little bit of burn on this one. Yeah, like a hot burn or something. I don't know if I got that on the other one. I didn't, but could also be, just got a little bit of chunks. Yeah. First pints. Well, either way, I'd say both of these are more than drinkable. Well, and not getting um, any of the things, uh, bad things I would expect yeah, I to don't get, get from any a beer that didn't get boiled. Or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, again. No vaginal quality. Yeah, uh, not going over that 170F I was hoping wouldn't get DMS. But this makes me want to mess around with these no boil things a little bit more. Uh, maybe try this recipe again, doing a little bit less flame out hops, more dry hops, something like that. But either way, have you guys ever tried any of this no boil stuff? I did it on an any IPA. I might try it on like a brown ale or something that doesn't have quite as much hops just to see what the flavor is. But, I'm basically um, finding out about this right now. Yeah, yeah, we don't talk that much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you've done anything like this, let me know in the comments. How did it turn out? What did you make? That sort of thing. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Cheers. Cheers. Well, cheers. Oh, I got one sip left. Oh, right, Sante. Right. Sebo.